Guys, Wages World coming at you with a video. Today's uh, August 3rd, 2021. I'm just going to kind of jump into it. I've made this thing like 11, 12 times now because I couldn't keep it under 10 minutes. So I'm just going to jump into it. Um, guys, here on the Schumann, um, this was a little bit of an uptick. And we're going to go deeper into this tool, what we're actually looking at later on during the live stream where I got more time. But as, as for now, you know, this little bit of an uptick is what we got. This here, nothing going on right now. For multiple hours so take that for what it's worth um, now we did take an unexpected hit and I'll show it to you here in a second geomagnetically this is over here at uh, Space Weather uh, Prediction Center NOAA and you got really nothing showing up x-ray wise but we did have a flare and I'll show it to you but it's right on the end and that's why it's not showing it yet um, this here is uh, radiation storms nothing going on there so what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at geomagnetic activity, and there was a little bit of a, we've got up to a two here. Um, I look for this next three-hour bar, average bar here. It may be a little higher than what they forecasted, which was a two, because of that little bit of an unexpected hit. Um, this is the first look at the sun. This coronal hole here, um, we did connect to. They're expecting us to get some uh, increased solar wind from that here in the next couple of days. Um, plus this one here. We'll go more into that in just a second. Um, here is the, the inlow spiral from uh, the NOAA model. And what you're seeing here is they're saying just normal conditions. But this is that from that corona hole. Okay. And, I, and they're showing it's going to be a sustained event, which means that um, it's just going to be ongoing for some time. And we'll, again, we'll go more into that. Now, the aurora forecast here, it skipped about two hours. There on the end, um, but it showed an increase there, and then it skipped time, and then now nothing down to nothing. So, um, but here's that flare. You can definitely see it. Not very big though. Okay, not much to say there. Okay, guys, this is Discover, and this is what I was talking about right here. You had a density dropout right here, right? So when that happened, the solar wind speed shot up at the same time, which is exactly what we would expect to see, right? But that's a pretty good jump really quick like. Now all these are within normal range, 3 to 500. Got up to like 440. But because of the quick change, that means it was pretty much a hit. Um, the BZ went to, did go to negative 6 there for a minute. The, the polarity, the phi angle, did not flip. Okay? So that's the only thing that's kind of got me wondering what's going on here. Um, that, and it says error and suspected error, whatever they're talking about here. I'm not sure if this tool is having a little bit of an issue or whatever. Um, we'll just have to wait and see um, what's, what's past this. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But other tools are showing us that, yes, we did take some sort of a hit. Um, this is our magnetosphere tool. And this is showing it. Okay. So let me back it up to the hit. We're going to start sensing it about right there. And we puff out. And then we get hit. Now, that's, that's speed. Now, this is the density part right here. Same thing. Okay. Take a hit. The white is lower density. The blue is, is higher. Now, on the pressure, you would think, well, yeah, we took a hit, so the pressure is going to increase. Well, guess what? Er, thanks for playing. Nope. <laughs> and then, let me show you why, why I think that is. Um, typically, when we get higher dense hits, that's when the pressure will increase and hang around for a minute. Um, but with a higher speed um, type of uh, hit, it doesn't seem to do that as often. So that's probably what we're seeing here. You definitely see us take a little bit of a hit of some sort. And then, you know, but the pressure doesn't build around the planet. So. Okay, guys, I got you over here at ISWA. This is from SDO, our view, satellite looking at the sun. Okay. So right here, this is that coronal hole I was telling you about. And again, Earth is just a little to the north of the equator of the sun right now this time of year. Um, we will be getting some increased conditions from this. But look at this one too. This one's more horizontal, which is going to give us that can, more of a sustained event. Okay, because it's got to rotate through. So it's going to be in front of us longer, hence a longer event. Um, and again, how strong that event is, we're just going to wait and see. Okay. Um, I don't see it being huge or anything like that. We could get into geomagnetic storm levels, I guess. Um, but maybe not, you know, real high or for very long. We'll just have to wait and see. I don't foresee any kind of big issues, though. 
But as you can see right here is that sunspot 2850. Um, you'll see it do its thing right there. You see it disturb the atmosphere. That was that little bit of a flare and it had a little eruption with it it looks like. But nothing big at all. Okay, just so you know. Now this is the 171. You'll see it a little bit better right there. To get real bright. That was a little bit of a flare. With, it looks like it may have had a small, small baby CME with it. So it doesn't even look like it's coming our direction from this point of view. But yeah. Geo Electric Field Model, guys. I really thought we would see something here, but the, it hasn't updated quite all the way yet. Um, so this is uh, Space Weather's effect on our electrical grid and, and artificial electrical components, but nothing to show. So we'll have to wait till we get the data in, and then we'll talk about it then. Um, SDO, which is right here, these captures I just showed you from this satellite, all right? And it's in eclipse season. So what you're going to see, you're going to see the Earth, pass between the sun and the eclipse in between there a little bit the satellite stays over the same part of the earth all the time but it's always got its eye fixed on the sun so that's why it has a an eclipse season it's inherent to the way that this thing works it's forecastable and everything else now i just want to say this i'm showing you this for one reason because somebody out there is going to say god got constipated and started throwing rocks at us or something. Um, that's, yeah. And that used to actually be me. So I, I leave those videos out there where I, you know, made those kinds of really uh, bad mistakes. Because that's a bad mistake to make. I just didn't understand what I was looking at. But I don't want people to be afraid to go look and try to understand this either. Okay? So watch me make my mistake. It's okay. I learn and I, and I correct and I go forward. Right? So... That's why I'm showing you this. But just understand, somebody out there is going to say what I just said. God got constipated, threw rocks at you or something, you know. But that is what it is. You can't stop all that. Okay, guys, this is over at spaceweather.com. This is the noctilucent cloud graph here. This is a water vapor that freezes over top of meteor dust, and it causes blue metallic-looking clouds, and they hang around our poles high up in the atmosphere. Now, as we get into fall, this, this stuff's going to fall off and not be here as much. It'll go completely away, and then you'll see it in the southern hemisphere because it's summer down there during our winter up here in the northern, and you'll see these things pick back up. So that's just what we're seeing, and this is showing exactly what I just said. These are starting to slowly dissipate, and they'll go, go to nothing, and then they'll go to, you know, probably a lot again. So... Now, earthquakes, guys, we've been seeing some fives, so lots of fours, high fours, a couple sixes. So not a whole lot to talk about there either. Um, but, yes, I do think space weather has an effect on this. Now, um, I'm going to be doing some live stream with uh, my, my my boy, uh, my brother, uh, Jerry Combs. He's starting his channel up. It's been up for a little over a month, I believe now, maybe a little longer. Um, Big Dreams, Little Homestead. And we're going to have, you know, I'm going to bring him on. He's going to show you what he's doing and all those kinds of things. And it's, you know, I think it's going to be really good for everybody. And um, I hope you guys come check that out. And it'll be within the next couple days. But I'll be back tomorrow with another update um, as far as space weather goes. And this unexpected hit, if something happens in between now and then, I'll hop back on and give you a short report. And we'll move on from there. So, God bless. Yahusha saves. And as always... You can drink this Kool-Aid.